Good morning, everybody. Those of you who are sitting here today and the one, uh, many people online, if I remember well, about 60 persons uh, are online today. I'm Jean-Michel Beaco, Managing Director of uh, Institut du Bachelier, the Paris-based uh, partnership research network in finance. This morning, we are pleased to present the OFEX tool, a new index measuring the attractiveness of financial centers. This uh, French-German initiative was born soon after Brexit, reshuffling the guards in terms of attractiveness of financial centers, and thus reducing the weight of the famous London city in financial transactions. Indeed, since Brexit, several, several thousand finance professionals have been relocated to European Union, and some cities have benefited from these transfers, such as Paris, Frankfurt, and Dublin, for instance. This dynamic makes the analysis of financial attractiveness interesting and useful. Furthermore, measuring the attractiveness of a financial center in an objective scientific way was lacking before the Brexit, before the Brexit sorry, and even more now after. It's not so simple and require several years of work with various experts and our partnership with uh, the Frankfurt CFS. This first version of the OFEX ranking will be followed by others as the index will be updated each year and its methodology with, will evolve in line with new data categories. The project is open to anyone interested in contributing, reflecting the ILB open network. <coughs> Here again, the future interaction will help us solidifying this index in order to make it reference to the financial industry worldwide. We wanted this index to be simple, clear, and collective. I think we did lead by example, partnershiping in a fruitful mode with our German partner at the CFS Frankfurt. The challenge now will be to make this index useful, and this is why I led the floor to Professor Rainer Klump, Scientific Director at the CFS, to continue this introduction before moving to the presentation of the FX, OFEX tool, mm -hmm. sorry, by Louis Boulanger. Thank you, Rainer. Your turn. Yeah. <coughs> Thank you, uh, Jean-Michel. Uh, et comme nous sommes à Paris, uh, et moi je suis à Paris, permettez-moi tout d'abord un petit mot d'introduction en français. Um, je suis uh, Rainer Klum, professeur d'économie politique à l'Université Goethe de Francfort et uh, un des directeurs scientifiques du Center for Financial Studies, un institut de recherche qui est associé à l'Université Goethe. Et actuellement, je suis à Paris comme professeur invité à l'Université uh, Paris-Dauphine. Et uh, je voudrais bien souligner que, aussi grâce aux bonnes relations uh, académique entre l'Université Goethe et euh, l'Université Paris-Dauphine, euh, le contact avec l'Institut euh, Louis Bachelier et le Center for Financial Studies s'est établi et euh, c'est devenu la base de notre très bonne euh, collaboration euh, que, qui a mené maintenant à euh, ce index qui, dont les résultats vont être présentés aujourd'hui. Now I continue in English and uh, let me again uh, underline that this uh, uh, collaboration that has started about two years ago or even more than two years ago between Center for Financial Studies at Good University Frankfurt and uh, Institut Louis Bachelier has been uh, very fruitful. Um, we had had uh, a very intensive exchange um, in which um, in the core of making also other external um, experts have been involved. But uh, I have to state that in the end, uh, the index is the result of the uh, cooperation between our two uh, academic scientific institutions. And uh, in my view, it's also a very good example of a well-functioning and very fruitful academic uh, cooperation between Germany and France. 
as uh, Jean Michel has already pointed out, um, the methodology of the index um, is is very transparent. So we will have the or all all observers will have the chance to to see what what we have done and how we have done it. Um, that's why we hope for a very intensive and again very fruitful and constructive discussion. We, we are very open to any kind of suggestions and criticism that we will receive. Um, both our institutions consider this index an ongoing project, so we hope that this, will, this discussion and also the interpretation of the index will continue over the next years. And it will, together also with other indicators, become one of the instruments uh, with which the attractiveness of um, financial centers can be analyzed, can be evaluated, uh, can be also critically discussed. Um, by concluding, um, I would also like to thank the team that is behind all this work uh, that uh, concerns uh, at the Center for Financial Studies, Volker Brühl, our uh, director, and uh, at uh, Institut Louis Bachelier, it's uh, Louis Boulanger and his team, and uh, I have the pleasure now to hand over to Louis. Thank you very much. So, um, thank you very much, Jean-Michel and Rainer, for these uh, introductory words. So, hi, everyone. My name is Louis Boulanger, and uh, I am the director of uh, Institut Louis Bachelier Labs, um, so a department within Institut Louis Bachelier. And I'm very glad to unveil today uh, OFEX uh, in front of all of you. Uh, I know that there are many people from uh, not only France and Germany, but also from other countries, so I'm glad uh, such interest is given to OFEX. Um, so OFEX, what does it stand for? OFEX, as you can see, uh, Open Source Financial Ecosystem uh, Index. And uh, already you can see one uh, key concept about this project, uh, and Jean-Michel has talked about it. Uh, it's about openness, uh, and you will uh, hear uh, again about this concept later on, as it was a um, key guideline of this whole project. And so what is it? Basically, it's a new financial center index, but let me start with um, a brief introduction of the two entities uh, carrying this project. So, as Jean-Michel has said, Institut Louis Bachelier is a research network uh, in finance, so it's quite similar to the CFS. And so it's a French one, focusing on gathering academics, uh, public authorities, and financial uh, entities from the private sectors, trying to, to, to develop research uh, in the finance domain. So it's about uh, 500 uh, academics working towards this objective. The CFS is in Frankfurt, so in from the Goethe University, and uh, works quite the same way because uh, it also gathers the same type of actors, uh, academics, policy-making institutions, and the financial industry. So it definitely made sense to work together to create this new index. Then I will start with a um, brief description of key or fundamental concepts uh, underlying the project. Um, so what do we mean when we talk about financial center and why is it important to look at uh, their attractiveness? So regarding the definition of financial centers, there is almost a consensus on it. Uh, you may find different definitions, but almost all of them are quite similar to the one um, we've chosen. So namely, it's a place. So it means that there is a geographical location uh, where many actors uh, will, um, will come to to contribute to the proper functioning of financial markets. And uh, why is it that important? Because it will lead to important synergies. And once we say that, uh, how can we define attractiveness? It's a little bit easier. It's basically the set of parameters that overall influence decision-making 
of mostly private institutions on where to do business uh, in the financial world. And if we look back a little bit on, um, at uh, financial center history, even if uh, exchanges have been, uh, well, we've seen uh, exchanges uh, for centuries, uh, the first one I think uh, were from uh, the 16th century, um, the literature states that basically the first financial centers that can be called so uh, really appeared uh, linked to the globalization of finance that happened in the 80s. And then we've seen several trends and events uh, leading to uh, great improvement or great development of other financial centers. And this led to uh, a big um, change in the shape of the financial world. Basically, now we have a network of financial centers inter interacting, and we, uh, we can see both cooperation uh, as they are working together. We have flows, human uh, or financial flows between those financial centers as well as competition. And this leads to the importance of attractiveness. Um, so why is attractiveness important? Because there is this competition between financial centers. And so it's very important to know how to measure it. So why OFEX? Um, the starting point, uh, as Jean-Michel stated before, was Brexit. Uh, when Brexit happened, the vote of Brexit, um, ILB experts, or academics, um, we thought, okay, what could happen? Uh, what could be the different scenarios that uh, may happen after Brexit? And our first uh, reflex was to look at what was available to look at that. And um, the key concept behind was attractiveness. Uh, attractiveness we may lead to understand how um, the financial center of the European Union may uh, reshape after Brexit. We looked at what uh, was available. We found a few tools um, easing this analysis, uh, but all of them had quite some limitations. So some of them uh, were no longer updated, so not up to date. Um, others had non-open methodologies, and it's quite a recurrent topic. So it's very hard to know uh, what is behind and how reliable the result is. And um, others mostly rely on uh, surveys. So it's not a problem in itself, uh, but we deem that it may be too subjective and um, something uh, more objective could be complementary at least. To be frank, uh, in the first place, we tried to quickly develop uh, our own tool. Uh, thinking that it may be doable in a few weeks or months, and we saw that it was uh, quite a heavy work in the end. That's why um, we decided to launch a whole project with two main objectives. Uh, the first one being about the database, so trying to create um, a database as comprehensive and possible and transparent, and um, relying only on open data uh, from reliable sources, and we'll come back to that later. And the second one is, uh, was to set up a tool, in the end we chose to create an index, um, a tool that is easy to use for uh, anyone who wants to use it, so mostly decision makers. Um, and this tool aimed at being, uh, once again, I will <laughs> you will hear a lot uh, these words, open, meaning that uh, we are really eager to work with anyone that is interested in uh, improving it. Transparent, uh, we try to be as transparent as possible on the data used on the methodology. Objective, meaning that uh, our key driver is always, is, it, um, is this indicator, is this um, approach, uh, does it make sense to measure attractiveness? And flexible, and I will come back to it later. And a good sign uh, or good example of openness is that, of course, we've worked uh, well with CFS experts and with many experts from um, Institut Louis Bachelet Network, as well as um, several uh, international institutions. And these institutions gave us feedbacks uh, to improve uh, the index uh, and 
I'm quite glad because most of them, or even all of them, uh, gave us uh, really good feedbacks on the overall approach that we will unveil right after that. We won't go too much into details um, in, the, in the methodology. You will have uh, way more precisions on the website. Um, I will quickly present the key uh, methodolog methodological points of this project. So the first one was to design um, and identify the categories um, that best reflect uh, the different facets of attractiveness. It was a long journey because um, basically we started with a literature review. Uh, we are still uh, academics. Um, and uh, there was no consensus on that. So we decided to launch a European student competition to try and get uh, more knowledge and many ideas written on this topic. And this was followed by a workshop with parallel sessions uh, with different experts from uh, basically European, it was from, from UK, from Italy, from Germany, from France. And um, we finished having the categories that were represented uh, right after that. Uh, and it was not an easy task because we, we had the, the opposite objectives of, of trying to be exhaustive while limiting the number of categories and we had the same problem with uh, indicators. Why trying to limit it uh, to basically to ease understanding? Once we have the categories, uh, the next question is which indicators do we want to put in these categories to measure attractiveness? And so here, um, two main drivers, so the indicators should reflect a uh, facet of uh, attractiveness for this category. And uh, here again, we want to limit the number of um, indicators for uh, understanding, and we want to avoid redundancy. Um, this work has mainly been led by uh, ILB and CFS, and uh, several inter interactions with experts and in international institutions have been done to make sure we were not missing something. Um, Regarding these indicators, I've said it before, um, we chose to rely only on open and uh, international sources, so reliable sources such as uh, IMF, OECD, uh, Bank of International Settlements, and so on, as much as possible. And then we try to find the balance between indicators for which, um, or information for which we, there were no such indicators, um, and we had important debates, uh, do we prefer to let it aside, so having uh, this facet not included in the index, or include another source that may not be as transparent and as re reliable as this one. Once we have uh, the indicators, um, comes the step of aggregating all this information to make it easy to use. So here, uh, there is an awesome job uh, from OECD. Uh, they've published a handbook um, called Handbook on Constructing Composite Indicators. It's quite a heavy document, uh, 200 plus pages. Uh, we've read uh, most of it, it's quite long. And um, we've chosen the best ways uh, to, to aggregate it. Perimeter. So we've defined what financial centers uh, are. Uh, then comes the question of, okay, which city or metropolis is a financial center? It's not exactly the same question. It's quite hard to answer. And so ideally, we would have loved to rank most uh, metropolis. But in the end, we had to make choices. Um, and we had um, two main guidelines for that. Uh, the first one being, uh, we wanted to make sure we had enough data to be able to properly rank uh, financial center. And the second one is, we want to rank, or we prefer to rank at least international financial center. So the biggest ones. So basically we had to make choices for countries with several um, financial centers. We chose to keep only the leading one, uh, except uh, for uh, US and China. 
So if we sum it up, uh, we had to restrict the parameter due to data quality and availability, as well as um, for a given country, we had to make choices as well. So the four categories we've chosen, uh, not chosen, but designed with experts, um, are listed here. Uh, as you can see, they are not put on the same level. So you have on the left-hand side the financial category, basically with indicators from um, looking at financial market size, economic actors from the financial domains, and so on. And then on the right-hand side, you can see three categories that are uh, gathered in a macro category called the working environment. The first one is business environment. So it's um, the overall ease uh, to develop, maintain a profitable business within a country or a metropolis. Then you have a human capital category. This one is more focusing on um, human capital availability uh, and more precisely on the financial sector um, at the given place, as well as capacity to attract it. And the last one, and the smallest one, uh, is the uh, infrastructure. Um, and this one reflects basically uh, information about transport and telecom, uh, telecommunication infrastructures. So um, overall, you can see that there are around 50 indicators um, underlying this project. And uh, the next steps were to collect all the data, to prepare it, uh, and to restrict the financial perimeter following the, the two key guidelines I've mentioned right before. After that, uh, we have an aggregation step. So uh, there are two steps uh, in this aggregation. So we create two subscores, um, a financial subscore, based on the financial category, and the working environment subscore. And the methodology to aggregate that is uh, basically based on OECD handbook. And the final score is um, simply uh, the sum uh, of these two subscores. And um, now I will come to the uh, ranking. So. Basically, the, f the ranking will look uh, like this. Um, show you're familiar with rankings, so how to read it. For a given financial center, you can see on the um, right-hand side the final score. So it's uh, in base 100, uh, 100 being uh, the, best, uh, or the, the, yeah, the best financial center, the most attractive one. And you can see the decomposition of a given score on the different subcategories. So if we take, for example, uh, London, uh, its overall score is about uh, 40, uh, 82, sorry, point 52. Um, and it's basically the sum of uh, the financial category with around uh, 46 uh, points, as well as uh, the different points on, of the other categories. What can we draw? Um, when looking at that. First thing is um, the top three uh, of this ranking uh, is well above the other places. Uh, so namely New York, Chicago, and uh, London. And uh, it is uh, quite consistent with uh, expert expectations. Uh, so we expected to have uh, New York and London um, in the top of this ranking and quite, uh, quite from um, high s higher score from other ones. Then uh, we can go into more sp details, uh, more specificities, um, trying to look at the subscores. We have some financial centers uh, that rank quite high on the working environment uh, subscore. So if you look at uh, Zurich and Singapore, they are basically in the top five of the working environment subscore. You cannot uh, see directly here, but uh, trust me on that. Um, but in the end, as they are uh, falling a little bit um, behind on the financial subscore, in the, they, they finish around the ninth and tenth place. If we do a quick focus on um, Chinese places, 
uh, you can see on the red bars that they have uh, very good scores on the financial um, subscore, but uh, they end uh, in 15th and 18th place for Shanghai and Shenzhen due to the environment, working environment score. Uh, quick comment on Hong Kong. Um, Hong Kong, we, we can find uh, specific data for Hong Kong in most uh, sources. Even if it, well, even when it says at a uh, country level, so most data for Hong Kong was uh, treated uh, separately, um, as it eased the final ranking. So overall, um, this project, uh, as stated before, it's a uh, first unveiling, so a first step. So it's a new attractiveness ranking, uh, open, transparent, and flexible. We'll find way more information on the website. Um, we only show, we've only shown the top 20 uh, because it was quite hard to, if we wanted to present uh, all the 47 financial centers ranked. We have 44 countries uh, covered and it may evolve. And uh, one important uh, thing to understand here is that We've re we really um, focus on two main categories, the financial sector development and the uh, working environment one. This uh, ranking aims at being uh, objective uh, and complementary to existing tools um, that, uh, that more, well, quite heavily use uh, surveys to create attractiveness rankings. And uh, the final goal here, obviously, is to that this uh, index is used by uh, decision makers. So two main types uh, of decision makers could be, uh, we hope, will be interested in it. Um, so the private ones having um, another point of view uh, on financial center attractiveness when deciding where to do business and public authorities to be able to compare themselves their financial center and see um, how they could improve uh, and on which facets uh, they could improve. This project uh, is not, uh, it's not the end of this project, releasing it. So first of all, uh, of course, we will update it uh, at least once a year, maybe twice a year. We are still uh, looking into that. Um, we think on the methodology and indicators used will evolve, we are quite sure. So regarding the indicators, some source uh, may stop being published. So we'll have the question, and do we replace them and we, we, with which ones? Then new sources may appear. So uh, an important topic, um, namely green finance. As of today, there is not much um, open information regarding green finance at the financial center level. So we have created uh, a few uh, variables regarding that, but we really hope um, that we will be able to, to use international sources in the coming years. And uh, for example, for FinTech, uh, the, the first international source uh, publishing an index on FinTech was the World Bank only last year. So green finance, I don't know when it will uh, happen because I know they are working on it, but it may take some years. And the methodology, uh, as we said before, we are really eager to get feedbacks uh, from uh, anyone who wants to give them um, so as to update the methodology uh, if we deem it um, necessary. On our side, uh, we plan on uh, going further in the, the analysis uh, of this index to better understand it, as well as um, we have um, separate projects linked to this one uh, because when we, we've worked on this project, as, as I have just said, we've seen that so there's almost nothing on green finance. So we've started working specifically on green finance um, to ease the analysis of financial centers. So here you will find two QR codes. Um, on the left hand side, a QR code leading to the website uh, that um, is released today, uh, so you will be the first ones to access it. On it, uh, you will find all the information about uh, indicators used, uh, 
the indicator which source um, uh, which source does it come from, as well as uh, way more details about the methodology and uh, the full ranking, obviously. Another thing available on the website, uh, and I will come back to that quickly, is um, at the beginning of this presentation, we talked about uh, flexibility. So we know that some people may have different uh, views on attractiveness, uh, be it an insurer or an asset manager. So people may want to change uh, either the indicators used or the weighting approach. Um, and so at the end of the ranking, you will find a tool to, uh, that allows people to create their own ranking based on our approach. And uh, on the right hand side, a QR code, uh, if you want to contact us, and I hope you want, uh, for two main reasons. One, to give us feedback, to improve it. And two, uh, for those who want specific presentation, uh, we have preferred to keep everything short uh, for today. Uh, but if you want more in-depth presentation, we are totally open to do specific session for that. Thank you, everyone. And uh, now we can move to the Q&A session. So boss uh, here and online. Thank you. Is there questions here or online? Yes, uh, Sophie Pedder from The Economist. I, I'd be interested to know whether you can use this index and go backwards to see what has already taken place in terms of trends. Have you done that? to see what, how the ranking has changed or where the positions have changed since uh, Brexit? Um, yes and no. <laughs> uh, the yes is we've tried as much as possible to retrieve information, historical information, to, to create the index, uh, the historical index. So we have it. Um, the no part is more about the further we go backward, um, the more we have uh, sources that were not published. So I, I talked about the World Bank uh, that released the, uh, its FinTech index last year. Um, and so we can go back a few years quite reliably, uh, two to three years. And specifically when we talked about further investigations, this is precisely this one we have in mind. How reliable is uh, the index um, when we have fewer informations dating back from 2016, for example? And we prefer to want to look at it uh, precisely before uh, getting conclusions while analyzing it. But when we do, uh, we see some moves. Uh, so for example, Chicago went um, took the second place uh, of London, if we look at uh, five to six uh, year time period. But we have to look further into it to, <laughs> to make sure that um, it is reliable. And they are very close, actually, Chicago yes. London, so it's kind of switched, which is possible, but we have to, to dig into it, to be sure. Because I, I understand your question, and this is a question of dynamics. There will be a other, other, I mean, other dynamics, and we are here. We are, we are really blocked by the history and the quality of the data, historical data. But uh, for sure, we will uh, keep your question uh, alive. Okay. <coughs> and a complementary answer because uh, we've not mentioned it, but w one goal of this project was also to create a robust ranking because we know that. Um, attractiveness should not change a lot from year to year. Um, and so what we see when we go backwards is that indeed you have changes, uh, but they are slow. And we are happy with that <laughs> because it's what we expect from attractiveness. Um, so that's why you have to look at a long time period. Uh, and we are trying, we are right now thinking on how we could do that. Um, if a given financial center is ranked high in our ranking, 
it should mean that uh, there would be an effect in three to five years after on financial markets or ecosystem here compared to other financial centers. But we need uh, historical depth to look at it. Sorry, I think I have a question. André, you have Oops, a question? A purely theoretical one. Uh, can you imagine, could you see what would happen if at some date uh, Paris and, Hamburg and Frankfurt were one place, one center? In other words, adding the financial numbers in terms of volume, but keeping the quality uh, of environment, uh, which is not too different from one place and that to another. What would, the, would it change the ranking, depending on the volume? Um, this is a question we've looked at uh, with CFS. Um, so as you said, it's not an easy task because <laughs> You have, you have variables for which you do not know how you cannot sum them, basically. Mm -hmm. um, and what we see is that this, the way we've done it, uh, at least, so uh, adding uh, Paris and Frankfurt um, leads to a theoretical place, financial center, that is almost uh, at the same level as London. So in short, uh, with this approach, Paris plus Frankfurt equals London. Very short. <laughs> Arnaud Bresson, um, I understand that uh, you uh, don't, uh, um, you, you were not able at this stage to uh, take into consideration all the criteria of sustainable finance, but we know that sustainable finance is a very, very uh, important trend for the next years. Uh, did you already consider some criteria like uh, Green bond issues, for example, for which uh, we have uh, quite uh, precise data uh, around the world, or social bond issues. Did you consider first criteria on the green uh, uh, and uh, sustainable uh, finance issues, or not yet? Um, yes, so regarding this topic, I, I told you before, um, for each topic, uh, we defined it what was interesting to look at. Then we were, we searched for uh, indicators measuring it. So green finance, um, we thought it was of paramount importance. So we looked for uh, specific indices and we've exchanged with IMF, OECD and so on to know whether they were, uh, they had something or were about to publish something. Uh, the answer in short is not very soon. Um, and so we've decided to create uh, specific indicators for that. So namely two of them, and you can find everything uh, on the website once again. The first one is indeed about uh, green bonds, uh, so based on uh, climate bonds initiative uh, data. Still a limitation, there's a debate. Do we want to look at uh, where the issuer is or where the bond is issued? There is a debate. Um, and the second information is about uh, stock exchanges. Um, so we've, wor um, we've worked with uh, sustainable stock exchange data. They have basically um, a list of criteria to assess uh, sustainability of stock exchanges. Uh, and so we've built kind of a susten sustainability index for stock exchanges based on that. So these are the two main informations we, uh, that are already included in the ranking. And uh, at the same time, uh, I'll talk about the other projects uh, that we've launched. Uh, we are already discussing uh, with climate bonds initiatives, uh, with uh, FC4S and so on, different actors from the ecosystems, trying to see how we could create uh, open data, not not a f it cannot be an index, it could be a database or whatever. The first step would be open data to assess a financial center, a green financial center attractiveness or just the greenness or of financial centers. Uh, Sophie Roland from Les Echos. 
uh, very um, basic question. Uh, what about uh, Paris? What are the weaknesses and strengths of uh, Paris as a financial center, uh, especially when compared to London and to, to Frankfurt? Um, so overall, we have not made specific analysis um, of financial center because the main driver of it was each time we wanted to make objective uh, decisions for it. Um, and we only look at the final ranking to ensure global consistency. So for example, in if New York and London were not in the top, uh, it means that we had uh, um, problems within our approach. Once we've said that, um, Paris regarding London, I would say that at least on uh, some um, tax aspects uh, that are in one or two categories, both in human capital and the business environment, um, there could be, can be, it could be, or at least in the final ranking, um, based on the way, I think it's mostly OECD data, uh, based on the way OECD uh, computes uh, these indicators. Um, so London is considered more, more attractive on uh, the tax section aspect, both on the human capital and um, on the firm's uh, taxation as well. Um, then on the financial hand side, I would say uh, London is importantly diversified and has uh, imp very important volumes uh, either in transactions as well as uh, more people in the financial domain um, that can explain part of the difference in the financial subscore between London and Paris. Uh, thank you. Well, following your question, I mean, I suppose on the website we could focus on each bar. I mean, the red one, the purple one, the yellow one. That's my first question. Then there is another question. Uh, if I want, for instance, if I want to re-rank the, f the red bars, for instance. To right. look only at the ranking yeah. on the financial sector? Can I do it? it? No, not, okay. uh, not yet. OK, fine. So it's first uh, very But rough. you can find um, in the documentation on the website, you will find the ranking of the subscores. OK. Or the fine. top 20, at least. So which is another way to can answer easily my question. Yes. OK, so I can view the ranking of the subscores. OK, then another question, which is more emotional. Coming from Italy, I'm a bit sad to see that Milan is nowhere. Um, <laughs> then what can I do? First, I want to understand it. Uh, why is Milan uh, below in Helsinki, for instance? Uh, first question is, why can I do it? And secondly, what can I do to improve it, OK? As a matter of fact, if I understand better what is lacking, I could maybe undertake uh, some work to make it happen in the top 20. I had this question from the Emirates, where I were uh, two weeks ago. Again, I mean, uh, neither Abu Dhabi or Dubai is in the top 20. I suppose people would like to work on it. How to do it? So. Um, first answer is um, the different financial places you've mentioned are ranked. So yes, they are not in the top 20, but they are ranked, so they are uh, on the website. Um, second answer, specifically on Milan, uh, my answer will be the same. We have not looked specifically uh, at a given financial place, uh, so we would have to to deep dive into this one to know precisely uh, why. And I'm sure every single financial place will have the same question. Where am I and uh, why am I here? Uh, and it would be specific analysis for each one. So we need to contact. So, yes, that's why uh, uh, I think we will uh, see how to handle that. Um, we can do specific analysis. So first, the feedbacks, your reactions. So Milan is not in the top 20. You expected it to be in the top 20. It's a point. Um, and so we can look specifically of why uh, so and uh, see if we have to update the methodology, if it makes sense. 
Yes. Richard Weiss. Uh, very interesting. Yeah, it works. It works, okay. Um, the f um, first sight, it seems to be, it seems there is a very high correlation between the different subsections. In other words, if you're good in finance, you're good in business, you're good in infrastructure, you're good in human. Does, well, first of all, that would um, lead to a possibility that even if you put two million finance guys in Milan, it won't still be in the top 20. But is there a, correla is there a, a ranking? Wh which one comes first, the egg or the chicken? Do we, or, or do they all come together, basically? Um, so I really love this question because we really know we've thought about it quite a lot. Um, and so overall, the approach we've implemented focuses precisely on uh, handling correlations. So if I go back to uh, the previous slide, so here, uh, why do we gather the three categories on the right hand side? Um, and why do we aggregate it and how do we do it? I won't go into details, but basically we use uh, an approach that gets read of uh, correlations. So meaning that um, if the business environment is good and that leads to human capital coming to this place, uh, or uh, the contrary, whatever, uh, so if there is correlation, then uh, it will be set aside, ba set aside uh, based on the approach we've, uh, we've implemented. So, uh, then if you look at that, it means that on the working environment, we have a global score that reflects uh, the working environment uh, globally getting rid of correlations. Same thing for the financial hand side, then only remains uh, the correlation between the financial sector and the working environment. And so this was a choice. We could have uh, gathered everything at once, um, but we, we thought it would be better to, to have it like this. As well, um, for a specific, um, specific thing, namely uh, for the weights. Uh, we wanted to be able to, to control and uh, vary the weights of these two categories. We had very long debates uh, about, uh, is it more important to have a very developed uh, financial sector or uh, an awesome working environment? And we chose to have a balance between them, but we know that other people will be more interested in the financial economic sector, and you can change it on the website. And that's why we chose to do that. Yeah, may, may, maybe a comment from the from the Frankfurt side here. I, I, I don't see that there is always correlation. There are also very, very nice uh, or interesting differences in, in what we see. Uh, for example, there was a question what, what uh, Frankfurt could take out of it. Um, what I take out of it is that Frankfurt is doing quite well on the working um, environment dimension, um, except for the human capital uh, part. And that's something where I, I think uh, also political decision makers in, in Frankfurt uh, c c should should have an eye on and uh, could, for example, uh, try to, to improve uh, con conditions for foreigners that, that want to work in the city um, that should improve the, the attractiveness of the, of the higher education um, institutions. So th that, that's what one can take out of, out of the different um, dimension of the index. Uh, so now we have some questions from uh, the chat. So the first one is, how can we be sure of the scientific robustness and whose experts are the scientific guarantees of this project? Um, so two, uh, or even one answer, one short answer. Basically, we've been working uh, only with uh, scientists from ILB and CFS uh, for the methodology development. And uh, so basically all two entities are the guarantors of uh, the scientific quality of it. And once again, uh, you will have way more details on the website. Uh, so if you want to challenge us,
please do. Another question. Could you give an example of uh, raw data you are using? Of raw data? Um, I don't know if it's in the appendix. I don't think so. Um, so for the financial sector, we have uh, stock exchange, uh, stock, uh, stock uh, volumes, uh, bond trading volumes. We have um, the location of headquarters for major uh, financial institutions, both from the private sector as well as international cross-border ones. Um, I have s well, you can have the list uh, directly on the website. Uh, I think it will. Uh, more than 50 indicators, basically. And I would say around 40 of them are from uh, totally reliable sources. Others, I would say, most of the other ones are from sources that has, are used uh, for most people uh, because international sources have not yet published something like that. So, for example, I always come back to fintech, but uh, until last year, there, were, there was only Findexable uh, that was publishing a, a well-known uh, index, and everyone was using it uh, on, has been using it for six or seven years. And um, there are only, I think, three indicators that we have to build ourselves, including the two in green finance. Uh, why Dubai is in the ranking, but not Abu Dhabi? Um, the answer on this um, will be uh, if the financial center is not in the ranking, it means that uh, the coverage uh, in our sources is not um, complete enough. So it means that, uh, if I sum it up, uh, basically it should mean that uh, we are missing data on almost 50% of the data sources we use. So we deem that we cannot properly rank it. Another question. Do you plan to expand the index and consider more financial center? Um, so we do not choose which financial center we rank. Basically, we, we start with a large, um, uh, large list of financial centers. And then uh, it's only a matter of uh, data availability. So if data availability increases in our sources um, automatically, uh, the number of financial centers ranked uh, will increase. And um, there is only then the question for um, countries with several financial centers uh, and so here we've made the choice of keeping only the leading one, except uh, for US and China, because there are, we are several leading ones, basically, um, in the approach. Um, my name is Stefan uh, Zellen. Um, I did perhaps not pay attention when you presented the whole composition of the index. Uh, I was wondering, therefore, where we would find the legal environment, a legal environment in terms of national le legislation, uh, courts, uh, but also know-how of law firms, etc. Is it in the, in, the, in the finance, business, human, or infrastructure uh, department? Um, if so a part of it will be in the business environment, the global legal uh, framework. And uh, we will have as well some specificities in the financial sector, I think. Um, so we have uh, information on uh, anti-money laundering, uh, efficiency, and, um, implementation and efficiency. So this will be in the financial category, more precisely. Uh, regarding the legal question, yes. We are good. Well, thank you, everyone. Uh, and I hope to get uh, many feedbacks and many contacts to improve it. And see you soon for the next release. <laughs>